Hi and welcome everybody to episode 9 of the Talk is Cheap show. For those of you who don't know already, the Talk is Cheap show is a show that looks at matters in the world of football, relating mainly to Arsenal, although not exclusively so. But before we go any further, let me introduce Big C, Cody in the house. Same, what are you bro? saying, man? Everything, Chris? Yeah, all good, man. All good. Good, good. Nice one. We've got a great show lined up for you this week, um, but before we delve into the main part of the show, I just thought we'd touch on matters we discussed last week um, but keep the comments coming people we appreciate all the messages you send all the constructive messages we try to incorporate as best as we possibly can but we do appreciate that you're being interactive with us which is what we wanted so that's great keep the comments and messages coming so uh, last week's show we discussed our main topic was uh, the aftermath of uh, Emery's sacking um, there was a few favourites that were emerging for the job um, and we had a list of five, didn't yeah. we? And we narrowed that down to two, which were namely uh, Allegri and Rogers. Um, so you went Rogers, Rogers Allegri, yeah, yeah. I went Allegri Rogers. Um, the vast majority of the people who messaged us pretty much agreed with what we said. Um, and there was a few uh, other managers that were put in the mix. Um, but yeah, pretty much you did agree with what we said there so yeah thank you very much again for that it's funny that since then rogers signs a new contract yeah i was just about to go on to say that there's been some development since yeah. then um rogers <laughs> he signed new contracts rogers so, used us to yeah. get more money <laughs> yeah so if uh, those of you who watched last week we were talking about the fact that we thought that rogers was flirting with arsenal you yeah. know what i mean flattering his eyelids showing a bit of cleavage and saying hey you know what i mean yeah and now we know why he was doing it because yeah. we found out uh, a couple of days after our show New that five lo and behold contract. my man signed a five year deal for the, the amount of money wasn't revealed no, was it apparently it was a significant, significant pay rise, money. Yeah. and uh, they're also talking about he would have negotiated into his contract um, the ability to get more money from the club to sign more players in yeah. January yeah. so um, Mr. Rogers is a very smart man, yeah. clearly. Fair play to him. Yeah. But, yeah uh, I mean, he made us look a bit silly. Yeah, didn't <laughs> once again, man, I mean, <laughs> you know our thoughts. Uh, we thought we got outmaneuvered by Tottenham on uh, the Mourinho thing. Yeah. Brendan Rogers has outmaneuvered us <laughs> now, flirted, you know, and yeah. now he's got his new deal at Leicester. So. And Allegri's um, basically ruled himself out. Yeah, apparently Allegri's uh, he's ruled himself out. Mm. He does want to take over mid season. He's talking about. Wanting to learn the language and yeah. so forth. But you do wonder to yourself if it had been Man United. Yeah. Would he have been so reticent? It may have been a bit different. <laughs> when they put a big bag of money All on the All of a sudden table. the language is not that yeah. important yeah, anymore. Yeah. So, um, But listen, fair play to the man. I mean, if I was in his position, I'd probably do a similar yeah. thing, wouldn't you? There's no rush for him, There's is no there? rush. He's enjoying and, his um, time off. So. Let's face it, uh, more managers in high-profile clubs are going to lose their jobs in between summer, now and yeah. the end of the season. So he'd be quite right to sit back and see and what wait, happens yeah, in the yeah. interim, you know, so. Um, so I guess that means Freddie's going to remain in charge, at least Maybe. for now. Yeah, for now, yeah. Um, and by the same token, would that, because I was thinking about this today, so by that same token, with Freddie remaining in charge, does that mean that Arteta is slowly moving up? Well, I hope up not. the list. He probably is by default, isn't he? Because we're just running out of candidates now. Because uh -oh. I've got a theory that the Arsenal board wouldn't mind Arteta being in charge. No. I mean, I did briefly explain my position on that last week, and I'll just reiterate it briefly again, which is that Arteta is an Arsenal man. He's a well-renowned coach. Um, he's never managed before. So he's not the kind of guy that's going to go in and create problems for the board, is he? Yeah. He's going to be pretty compliant. A puppet, basically. <laughs> well, I need to... <laughs> your word's not mine, That's man, what the hey, board like, don't they? Well, awesome. well, they want somebody that, let's say, works well no, okay. with the board. Within their yeah, system. Yeah. yeah, so he's not going to run in the office, bang his uh, fist on the table and demand no. money for players, is yeah. he? He's going to say, well, OK. They're going to say, well, this is what you've got to work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah OK, I think yeah, I'll we'll make that work. That, yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of reminiscent of the kind of uh, Arsene Wenger days, yeah. don't you think? So, yeah, man. And uh, well, what have I got? I mean, listen, you got Arteta. There's uh, another guy that we've been linked with now, isn't it? Marcelino. Marcelino. From Valencia. Oh yeah, I heard yeah. about that one. 
But today, there's uh, Paolo oh, Sosa. Yeah. Uh, so me being me, <laughs> I did my due diligence on Paolo Sosa. Yeah. And I looked, I looked at what <laughs> clubs he'd previously managed. I mean, he's at Bordeaux at the moment. I yeah. think they're doing fairly well in the French League. Yeah. Um, but tell, I us, at the tell us about his illustrious <laughs> CV. <laughs> the CV, the CV has got some like major Premier League yeah. names in it, yeah, man. QPR <laughs> and Swansea. Although he did manage Leicester as well, but um, they're all in fairly quite a short period of time yeah, as well, which yeah. means that he probably got dismissed from all three. Maybe he's good on a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> he's impressed someone, but. He, unlike uh, Allegri, he clearly does do auditions. Yeah, yeah, he does. So, um, and to be honest, I think that's paper talk. Though um, I can't see us going for a manager like that. Uh, it would, it would surprise me if we do. I, I'm kind. I tell you what, kind of surprises me, and this is no disrespect to Paolo Sosa, although it's going to come across as a disrespect. But all I can say is no disrespect intended. But the fact that we're even linked with a guy like this. Mm kind of shows you where we're at yeah. as a club right now. The fact that we haven't got a manager in, yeah. um, the, you know, all these names we've been linked with, I, I just find it a little bit disturbing, to be honest. It um, seems like there was no plan in place no plan. and they're just trying to figure it out as yeah, they go along. Yeah, just literally, like you said earlier, you said, you know, um, Freddie getting that win has probably given them a bit like, oh, we'll leave him there a yeah, bit longer. I, yeah, I said that you to know you, know, that they were probably celebrating it harder yeah, than hard, the fans yeah, were celebrating. Yeah. Because uh, you know they we lose that one man, everyone's under pressure. They would have said them. get rid of him. And you know going to be quite a lot of people who are thinking oh, I'm not going back to Arsenal until they sort it out. Yeah. So yeah man. Well so that's our thoughts on that. Well people, the Premier League, as we already know, is the gift that keeps giving. And over the weekend there was a few talking points that I thought we'd just uh, chop it up and talk about for a little while. What are you saying about that? Yeah? You okay with that? Yeah yeah all good man. First up, um, unfortunate to have to say, we had more instances of racist and homophobic abuse up and down the country, which is very sad to see, but it's a societal thing, and I guess with football, all football does is just reflect what happens in society in general. But um, yeah, incidents taking place at Brighton, Everton, Forest Green, Man City and Tottenham, man. Um, pretty sad, but we... we, we did, What's your yeah, obviously the main one I think that people were talking about was the Man City incident. Mm. Obviously the guy doing the, you know, the monkey or monkey chants or whatever. He was, Although he said he had his hands down his He was his trying to put them like in it. his pocket or something, you know. <laughs> We've heard it all now. Yeah, we have. I don't heard know heard if heard monkeys heard. put their hands in their pockets, so I don't no, know. I don't know. I don't know what. No. <laughs> one of them um, excuses, but I, I see. And apparently half his family are black. Yeah, as well. yeah. So I don't know. Some of the, uh, I don't know if he's confused or what, but um, no, it was. We know it was, he's been arrested. Yeah, quite rightly so. And obviously been suspended from his job. Yeah. Um, it's one of them, minute where he's probably, you know, it's kind of he's got a bit overconfident and it's it's come out of him, but it's embarrassing, isn't it? And it is. Uh, he's gonna get what's coming to him, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he deserves to have the full weight of everything thrown at him, man. I've got absolutely no sympathy no. with people like that. Especially but, when you're looking at it, half their team is is I black know, and foreign, you know what? What kind of message does he think he's sending? Mm. But no, so, what do you think like, should what should we do with guys like that from he, a football from, perspective? What well, do you think from a do? football perspective, he should be banned. He should not be allowed to watch a game Bank. of football again. Ever again? No, right? I don't think ever. Why mm. would Man City so want? So you're him? saying a life ban? Life ban, but I think he should be getting prosecuted criminally for that. Yeah. Um, no, I, th I think I think they need to take a stand, and because if you did that in the street, they would act different. Exactly. Um, but in a football ground, it's like, oh, give him a slap on the wrist, send him home. Mm. For me, he should be put him in the prison and then see if he s starts talking like that when he's in there, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very disappointing. And, yeah. you know, in this country, we tend to, I wouldn't say lecture, but we highlight what happens in mm -hmm. other countries. So, yeah. so, for example, with the Bulgaria thing yeah. a little while back, you know, we there were certain people in this country that was sort of getting on their moral high horse and mm. um, saying that Bulgaria should be thrown out of tournaments yeah. and stuff. And listen, I do agree with that. Yeah. Grounds being closed down and the potential of points being, being taken away. Maybe it's something that we need to look at closer mm. to home as well. Yeah, um, yeah, because I mean, it's happening here, isn't it? It's, it is. It's easy to say, oh, you know, when we go to these countries, it happens, but it's happening on our doorstep. I mean, the the, uh, the Tottenham game, for example, uh, there was a Burnley fan there, 13 mm. years old, yeah, 
and he um, saw fit to racially abuse uh, some. I mean, that's disgusting, man. Yeah. And it just makes you wonder. I mean, listen, you're never going to eradicate race racism totally, but I think the message needs to be clear from these um, yeah. from the authorities is that we're not going to tolerate it in the ground. Mm. So the message should be is that if you are of that disposition, you mm. feel that way, you don't like black people or people of colour or you know people you perceive to be gay then that's maybe that's something you should keep to yourself or don't go don't risk going to football because when you're found out when you're caught there should be no hiding place you yeah. should have the book thrown at you and i don't think they're they're punishing them enough so no exactly that's, so that's, that's what i'm saying so problems. you know we need to look at some draconian <clears throat> punishments you know so um yeah people it's all very sad but if we're being honest it's not the last time we're going to be talking no, about this subject is yeah. it so but um Moving on, um, mm. the other major talking point was the the Manchester derby. Yeah. And um, is the title race all done to all intents and purposes? I think, it's, I think it is. I think it's done and dusted. I think Liverpool will win it now. Um, Leicester are doing a good job of chasing them, but I think with the run of games they've got and the lack of depth in their squad, I don't think they'll be able to keep up with Liverpool. Um, yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, it would be a great story, wouldn't it, if yeah. Leicester could apply some real pressure, yeah. put Liverpool under pressure and that. But they've got some pretty tough games coming right. up as well. And um, as good as Leicester are, they're very dependent upon Vardy. Vardy, because yeah. I mean, and Vardy's in a very rich vein of form. Yeah. But um, you have to say that if Vardy's not scoring the goals, uh, Iheanacho. He's, he's a very capable player. He's not on board. He's, he's, level, no, is he's he not. And I think they would struggle. Yeah. Um, and Liverpool got a much stronger squad. Yeah, I think and, they'll. Uh, run, I actually think they'll run away with it. You think they will? City look like they've. I don't know what's happened to them, but, but we'll talk about City yeah, a bit later. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. They yeah. don't look to be. No. Or it, could it be that they're? Um, they won't say it, obviously, but they're secretly prioritising the Champions League. The thing is, I don't actually think they'll win the Champions <laughs> League either. I mean, the defence they've got, I just, I couldn't see them dealing with Barcelona no, and teams like that. Out, to be honest. So I think maybe their hunger's gone. You know, they've dominated mm. the last few years and they don't look the same team. But even, yeah, even last year when they won it, I mean, OK, they had that great run they put together at the end and we mm. had the Vincent Company wonder goal and all yeah. like that did paper over some of the cracks didn't Earlier it really? on in the season um, I think they miss company as well he's a leader isn't he? and they miss Laporte yeah um, yeah, he's been instrumental yeah for and um, they haven't replaced him no and um, slightly yeah. arrogant I think um, you think so yeah because to go into the season with three centre backs company went they didn't bring anyone in I think that's a big mistake from Pep mm, and I've seen today in fact where they're targeting Nathan Ake yeah but then Chelsea won him back. <laughs> yeah, could well, be too so. little, too late. That, I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. I, I think, think Liverpool. I think it's over for them. I think Liverpool have earned this title. Um, to be honest, they are a, they are a big club, and you know Klopp's done a great job. Every time I watch Liverpool play, I'm entertained by them, mm. and I think I think they will be deserved winners if they do win it this season. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm with you on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we think the title race is all but done. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Let us know. Do you think that um, Leicester might, you know, provide the upsets of all upsets? Like they did a few years back. Yeah. Um, but I doubt it. No. For me, it's uh, Liverpool's to lose. Mm. The next segment of the show looks at Arsenal's last two games since our last show. Um, so let's look at those. Uh, the first one, last Thursday, oh. at home to Brighton. Yeah. 2 1 defeat. Curtis, tell the people what you thought. Well, that game was a horror show, wasn't it? Um, Thursday night football hasn't suited us for a while, but it was a Premier League game. and You're right there, because that was coming off the back of the previous Thursday. Yeah, with the Frank 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 Frank. Um, we turned up to the game, there was no atmosphere. Nobody seemed to really believe we were going to win the game, which was strange when it you were talking to people. I just thought, if you can't beat Brighton at home, I don't know where we go from here. It was a really bad night, I think. Yeah, I a saw a lot of yeah. fans actually quite upset outside the ground. You know, some guys who've been going for a long time, they said, I've never seen it like this. <laughs> and for the quality of some of the players that we've got, to lose at home to Brighton, I don't yeah, think yeah. Brighton had won away from home no, all no. season. So. And they'd lost their previous three going into that game. Yeah. And I know we spoke on the last week's show about they had made... Uh, 
a decent effort against Liverpool, hadn't they? Yeah, yeah, they were unlucky. Um, so the warning that, yeah. signs were there. Yeah, um, and then we just... But even I wasn't realistically thinking you know, that they were going to come to the Emirates and do that to us because they beat us in the end with something to spare, wasn't yeah, it? Was no, there was no fluke about no, it. No, they, they, were the they went for us to beat us, didn't they? You know, yeah. They could have scored more. Uh, that was a bad night. It was a bad one. It was a bad night all around, people. Yeah. And then moving on, um, that put more pressure on the team for, for the West Ham game on the Monday. Yeah. And... Um, but slightly better news. The sun was shining. <laughs> it's the turn <laughs> Away to West Ham yeah. on a Monday night. A lot of us were fearing the worst. I certainly was, especially when I heard Mikel Antonio saying with relish how much he was nah, looking forward yeah. to playing in that game. Yeah. And I had envisions of him just tearing us apart at mm. the back. But um, we made some changes yeah. prior to that game. Um, good changes in my Good changes. Opinion. Well, yeah. it turned out to be good changes. Yeah. Uh, David Luiz was left out, which I must admit, I was a little bit mixed on that one because I, I don't think he's been our worst defender no. to be honest um, I, I get what people say that he's got a mistake in him and all that but mm. Socrates also uh, has, has got a mistake in him and mm. I think on balance probably Louise has probably been our better defender in recent weeks but hey um, the manager the interim manager decided not to select him yeah and we went with that but what I was it. pleased that he did is that he um, selected Nicolas Pepe yeah um, so yeah, so the West Ham game, we, um, we managed to get a win. Yeah, I mean the first half was uh, more of the same what we've been seeing, it was terrible. The first half was absolutely but woeful. It was bad. But fair play to the team, they, they showed that heart that we've been looking for. I think yeah. sometimes when you're having a bad run of form, as fans you can accept it if you feel like they're giving everything. It's just yeah. not how, at times I've come away thinking they don't look like they've put enough in. But Could that be a confidence thing, though? Because I don't think there's no, I don't think there's an excuse for that. <laughs> I think, I think as a player, you've got to give everything every week, no matter what. Even if your confidence is low, you got to work until True. it turns around. But I felt they showed a lot of heart, and I think yeah, because Freddie, I think you're right because Everton showed that, didn't they, at the exactly, weekend when yeah, they played Ferguson. Chelsea? Yeah, you know, they were going into that game on a poor run of results. Yeah, they sacked the manager. Um, they brought in an interim, Duncan mm. Ferguson. is a bit of a legend at the place, a bit like Freddie is yeah. for Arsenal. And I watched that game, mm. and um, they were chasing everything down. Mm. The crowd was behind them. They had the passion, the energy. So yeah, but it's just that having played a lot of sport myself, I know that sometimes confidence can be linked to energy. Yeah. If you're confident, yeah, you're tired. subconsciously you, you just feel full of energy yeah. and things happen for you and you believe they're going to happen and mm. it makes you perform a little bit better. Yeah, um, I agree with that. On the other hand, if you're not so confident, you tend to second guess things a little. Yeah. Um, you're not it's as not instinctive. Naturally, is it? it doesn't happen naturally. Yeah. You're tending to force it. And people looking at that subjectively can think, oh, he's not putting it in. Oh, you know, why didn't you get to that ball a little bit quicker? Why mm. didn't you close him down? And I think that can play a part too. I think you tend to find with better players that doesn't affect them as much. No. I think you look at our team, we've been poor this year, but Aubameyang has still performed at a high level. Leno's performed. Yeah. Guendouzi at times, Lacazette. So I think... But yeah, I get what you're saying. When you're struggling with confidence, you do tend to tire a little bit quicker. But... It was a great win. And, it know, was. There were scenes, weren't there? We was we was really yeah. celebrating. Yeah, when we I won mean to come from cause... one nil down as well. Yeah. Because I remember, you know, me and you were watching the game, yeah. and um, at half time we were looking at each other, weren't we, and saying, "What the happening. hell is going Relegation on?" Relegation battle. I will tell you what, what, man. We <laughs> if we'd have lost that game yeah. yesterday, you c you could see it, couldn't you? With the fixtures coming up, because that was like... you know I think we were nine games without a win, mm. and you know, and it wasn't just the poor run of results some of the teams we're losing to or not beating bottom of the team and you're thinking to yourself where are we going to get a win so mm. if we'd have lost to West Ham yeah you know it could have been real serious I think right? it played into our hands because West Ham to me looked like a poor team yesterday. they did didn't they um, yeah. they look they've got good players but they look similar to us they're lacking belief the manager where happened really... to Felipe Anderson man I mean I, know, I used to I... look at that guy and think yeah. I'd love to see him in an Arsenal yeah, shirt. Yeah, I agree. But Yesterday I was looking and I was like, right, is that the same scored, player? He hasn't scored for ages either. Um, and he don't look the same no. player. And this is what I'm saying about confidence. When you're not confident, mm. yeah, I mean, you can look a certain way and man will think, right, that's not the mm. same guy I saw playing a little while ago. And that's We're what hoping I felt it was about a turning point really, aren't we? For us? Yeah, exactly. We need man. to I mean, build on it. Once that first goal went in, um, you could see, you could literally see the confidence returning yeah. to some of the players. And then... Yeah. Pepe steps up 
Brilliant goal. That goal, man. I, I was so happy was for him, man. That. Yeah. He needed that. Everyone I mean, we was. said last week, you know, why is Freddie not embracing him? Yeah. Um, but he has, and hopefully, you know, that, that's the first time I've seen Pepe smile <laughs> since he's been at the club. He needed some love, though, He it? did need some love, you know. You, he's a young guy at the end of the day. He's, he he's just come love, to this country, he doesn't speak the language. Yeah. You know, you need a manager to believe in you. I think a lot of the fan base have been hypercritical of Pepe, to be honest, okay. because... You know, he's a young man, right? Mm. He's he's come from a foreign country. Okay, it's France, so it's not like he's come from the other side of the world. Yeah. But anyway, but even so, he's a young man. He's come into a completely different league, completely mm. different environment. I don't think he speaks English no, at the I moment. Don't. Um, he's learning his trade in a new country, new environment, new players he's got to work with, new mm. systems, a team that's not full of confidence, no. and um, we're expecting all these big things. And listen, the fans are entitled to expect yeah. a certain level of performance, so I get that. But give the man time, man. Mm. Show him some love. The manager needs to believe in him. And mm. when first Emery and then Freddie were dropping him to the bench and not playing him and bringing him on with 10, 15 minutes to go, I personally don't think that's the right way no. to handle a young guy like that, who let's face it as well, is a £73 million asset. Mm. You've got to treat them better than that. I think, number one, I think um, fans nowadays are not very patient. No, and not. when you spend that much money on a player, there does come a level of expectation, whether yeah. they deserve that or not. And I think um, I think a lot of it as well, him getting dropped, came from trying to fit Aubameyang and Lacazette true. in the That's team. True. So I think at times Emery felt like he had to be the fall guy. Yeah. where Freddie made the decision last night that look I've got to change the system yeah big shout outs to Martinelli um, yeah, for his goal and his brilliant. performance man I mean I must admit me and you were chopping out before the game mm. and uh, I, I'm a big Lacazette man you know yeah. I mean I'm a fanboy with Lacazette and I like <laughs> what he does for the team I like so I was him, unhappy to see him dropped yeah. but I listened to a man like you and you were saying listen man it's um, even though we love Lacazette it's right for the team if Martinelli comes in in the position that he played. And, and he played really well. He got his goal. Mm. He got us going, didn't he? He did, yeah. He got us moving. So fair play to him for that. Yeah. And fair play to Freddie for making that call. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, like you said, Pepe gets that wonder goal. And a few minutes after that, he sets, sets up, up um, Abami. A whole front three scored. Yeah. And then no it idea. was amazing. You could literally see the transformation, couldn't you, in the, the team? confidence, yeah. The confidence return. And correct me if I'm wrong, I even saw a few Olays. Yeah. Towards the end, you know, season, we, which which we've gone from like we're getting really zero to a hundred. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, like we were the worst team in the league. Yeah. Uh, to we're looking confident and sharp, and things are flowing again. So it was it no, really it was. was. It was and then night. even we were talking, weren't we, after about after the game, the fans, both in the ground and Arsenal fans like ourselves were celebrating like we'd won a trophy yeah, no, it, and it that's meant, how much the win meant it meant a lot I just think everyone in the club and the fan base we all needed that and, yeah, uh, right. and the way we won as well it was quite dramatic yeah in point. the end it was a quite a convincing yeah. win we started off really poorly um, we picked up mm. we got the win and I guess in sport it's what happens at the end that counts yeah, so yeah. hey great result right for, so for our main topic of this week's show it is we are staying up, so we are staying up. <laughs> or does that win paper over the cracks? We want to know. Does this win mean that we've turned some type of corner and we're going to avoid relegation? <laughs> Joke. But you know, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, are we okay. going to? Is this is this it now? Have we turned a corner, or did yesterday's brilliance by Martinelli and Pepe in particular is it papering over the cracks? If we've got serious um, problems that you know still what? need to be addressed. I think there is problems that need to be addressed. I think we all need to enjoy that win, first of all, because yeah. we haven't won since September in the Premier League. But I don't think we know how big a win it will be until the next few games. Yeah. Um, if we lose our next game, then we'll forget about this win quickly. Mm. We have to build on it. And I like what Freddie did. I think he was brave. He picked the right system for the team. But there's a long way to go. There is, there is a long, go. long way to go. I think I think the whole club collectively need to come together yeah. and have a plan. I think they need to strengthen the squad in January. I think there's big gaps in the team. I think we need... Do you think Freddie will get any money, though, to spend? I mean, is he going to be there in January? <laughs> and this what I mean. The uncertainty doesn't help. I think it's looking like he's going to be there, you know. But I'd rather they came out and just said, you know what, we're giving it Freddie till the end of the season. Mm. I think the players, the fans, everyone knows where they stand. And at yeah. the moment, we're like, we're being linked with two or three managers every day. 
I know. You know, that's that's unsettling. And the players now might start enjoying playing for Freddie. Yeah. But then in the background, you're hearing, well, we're interviewing this guy, we're approaching this guy. I think they need to settle the whole thing down at the club. But this is where the lack of leadership from the top. Yeah, it's um, coming to We play. were speaking yesterday, weren't we? And some people were saying, um, you know, give Cronke a chance. It's his first year. As Josh Cronke. Yeah. yeah. But for me personally, I've got no belief in this guy as the owner I, I would I personally I'd love this guy to sell up because mm. I always think imagine where we would be if we had really ambitious owners yeah. when you look at teams like Manchester point, City you know what I mean we're a far bigger club than Man City but they've got incredible owners yeah. and what he's yeah. I was up there training ground a few weeks ago and their facilities are unbelievable and I you, think you make a good point there because in any organisation not just a sporting mm. organisation from top down yeah. or from bottom up to the top, everything, all the lines, everything has to align, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I think, and uh, let's face it, in any organisation, um, the strategies and is ever set from the top. Yeah. Um, and you're right, if the board uh, are not doing their due diligence and mm. not doing the right thing, it soon filters down, doesn't yeah. it? And into I other areas of the happened. club. I think so, that's what's um, happened um, and I just think but yeah we're, they're going to be here for now but you know I think um, there's a lot of division in our fan base Yeah. and that's one thing I would love to see the fans come together is sure. push these owners out of the club I know it sounds a bit dramatic but you know Liverpool when they was in debt they got Gillette and Hicks out the door we've seen other clubs do it I think it's a very fans. important point you raised. I mean, let's face it, people, as well. Um, okay, the title of this segment of the show, We Are Staying Up. I mean, okay, a lot of people look at that and laugh and say, oh, yeah. come on, they don't really mean that. Yeah. But listen, man, trust me, I'm telling you now, um, there was a lot of fans who were talking in terms of we could be facing a relegation <laughs> battle because if we lose that game last night yeah. and looking at some of the games we've got oh, coming up over the next me. month, which we would not have been because yeah. that would have been 10 without a win yeah. with a hard run of fixtures confidence at an all time low because yeah. going into that game people had said to me people who watch Arsenal for years and years okay, they were saying to me I've never known it this bad both on and off the pitch yeah. so you know it's a downward trajectory confidence is at zero yeah. and then like you said we've got some major fixtures coming up which if we're being honest we wouldn't have been expected to win those no all of a sudden, man, you you're, know in I mean? a Look, you're in a dog fight. You've got no divine right because of the size of your club to just say, we couldn't go down. Like, why couldn't we? So Do this you know? is not clickbait, people. No. A lot of people who follow the club and have been following this club for years were saying, look, if we don't win our next couple of games, you mm. could be looking at... Well, it was relegation four minutes. It was relegation four. No wins four. in nine. Yeah. And we're struggling. Um, and the longer you don't win, the harder that exactly. win is to get... Exactly. You know what I mean? So it was, you know, the game against West Ham was vital. It was so it important. It was so important for our season. And look, I'm not saying we'll get in the top four. We're no, hopeful. I, gone, I mean, we're only seven points behind Chelsea and we play mm. them at home in a couple but of weeks. The stat I saw before last night is that you're right. Maybe seven points now, but I think last night we were nearer to the bottom four yeah, we than we were to the, the top, top four. four. Yeah. And that tells its own story, yeah. doesn't it? So well, we need to get a run of wins together now, hopefully. But yeah, looking at the fixture list, it's not going to be easy to get those run of wins. No. Um, but something to build on, something to be positive about, you know. And let's hope we can move. Do we forward. have the characters though at the club too? Because that is something that's been a constant criticism, even yeah. dating back to the latter years of Wenger, mm. where people were saying that we're just not built for. No. I, I, and that criticism does have some resonance, doesn't it? Yeah. Because. Um, Mentally, we're not as strong as no. uh, some of the other teams have been. I, I think we lack leaders on the pitch. Yeah, we haven't got many big characters, have we? No, I we think haven't. in football in general, there's not as many big characters. If you look around the clubs, you know these Vincent companies, Vieiras, Keens. There's not many of them around anymore. Um, but yeah, I think I think Arsenal. It's coming to question a lot, and it the lack yeah. of um, character on the pitch. And then, of course, we got an interim manager in. Yeah. And like you said, you know, the players, some of those guys are going to be thinking, well, is he going to be here long term anyway? Exactly. The whole mood of the club at the moment, mm. certainly before the West Ham game and the win there, 
was on a bit of a downer. Yeah, um, massive. So personally, I, I'm so I'm made up that they got the win. Yeah, and I hope that we can push them from here on in because the way things have been looking recently, it's not been looking good at all. No. And then, like you said, it's talk of we've been linked with all these different managers and yeah. so forth. All this, it's all unsettling, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I think I think we'll be safe now. Anyway, no championship football next season. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, safe. it looks like we're staying up. Yeah. But um, but on a more serious note, yeah. Um, in terms of moving forward, what would you like to see? Huh? I think be decisive. Either give Freddie the job till the end of the season or line up. I was going to say that you know because I was saying in light of yesterday, now he's up and running. Mm. Is there a case for? I know it's only one game, but given the precarious position that we're in, would it be uh, above the pale for somebody at the board, mm. high up, to say, listen, we're appointing Freddie until the end of the season? Give the club an element of stability, yeah. rather than, like you said, us being linked with all these managers, some of them we've never even heard of. Mm. Um, every day there seems to be a new name. So to encourage some stability, yeah. for someone in the board to come out and speak boldly proclaim mm. Freddie as the interim appointment until the end of the season yeah. and, and approach it that way. Yeah, I think if if they can't get one of the managers they really wanted, like an elite manager, yeah. then I think don't bother getting a second rate manager. Don't end up, no disrespect to Emery, but don't end up in that situation again mm. where you think, oh, you know, he's not really who we want, but we'll take him. If you can't get a top manager, give it Freddie. Mm. The fans will back him, you know, but then the risk of that is, is that supposing it doesn't go mm. Freddie's way after two or three games and yeah. we lose or we don't win, we draw, the performances are so-so or yeah. not good enough, I think then the you might see some of the fans start to turn. Turn on him, yeah. I think the realisation's got to be that the players are in a mess. I think whatever manager comes in now, he's got a big job. Yeah. You know, we're a lot of points off. Um and I've seen players saying that Freddie wants them to smile and he's took the shackles off and things like that. And they're positive things to read. Yeah. You know, that the, he just wants them to play with freedom. And like I said, to me, if you're not appointing an Allegri, a Poch, you know, or Brendan Rodgers, which some of those guys have gone, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother getting no second-rate manager. Yeah, I must admit, I <clears> tend <throat> to agree with that. I think the die is cast now. I think we've uh, been linked with other managers for whatever reason we haven't been able to secure their services. I think for stability's sake, somebody in the board needs to come forth and make a profound statement say, look, Freddie's the interim manager till the end of the season and then the players just have to fall in line, do their jobs and um, get some wins and start climbing the table. Yeah. Thanks. So yeah, so uh, that's what we feel, people. Uh, do you agree with us? Um, do you think Freddie as interim manager should stay on till the, at least the end of the season and then we can assess the results after then that will give the board more time to do their due diligence and bring in what we would call a proper manager um, or do you think no we should still actively pursue a manager now and if we could secure the services of somebody uh, we should get them now let us know what you think thanks now for uh, one of our regular features on the show it's called Ops of the Week for those of you not familiar with the term Ops it's a street slang for opposition. Right, so ops for the week. Uh, Thursday, yeah. the 12th, Arsenal away in the Europa League to Standard Liège. My big, man Curtis. Big game. <laughs> <laughs> Massive game. Thursday night football, big all game. On the, all on all, the line, All man. or nothing. Forget Champions League. This is this where, is it's, where at, it's at, man. mate, yeah. Belgium on a Thursday night. I think um, if we actually lose 5-0, I think we can get knocked out, someone was saying. Yeah, I did hear that as well. But I'm, hope, it's most I'm hopeful. Even with our defence, I think that's defense, most I'm hopeful. Um, but, I mean, to take it a bit more serious, yeah. um, obviously we got a win the other night. Um, it's important, really, isn't it, that we carry on. on we don't. The last thing you want to do um, is to not win or lose yeah. or play badly against Standard Liège because yeah. then again you're going Brings into the, the weekend's game on a bit of a downer mm -hmm. so it's an important game people mm -hmm. yeah. this will be um, Lacazette plus the young lads really I was going to say what, what type of team do you think he'll play mm. it'll be the young lads won't it I think Saka Nelson Smith-Rowe we Willock we're pretty much through Lacazette um, I think will play for yeah. game time 
which is a bit harsh on him really is, he's man. gone from it like is. being one of the top boys to yeah, go and yeah. deal with that mess on a Thursday he's probably on the phone to his agent <laughs> saying listen man listen. Get when, me I, out when I leave this barber shop <laughs> get another shape of I'm leaving <laughs> check out the barbers in uh, <laughs> Spain yeah that's you know it I mean? because boy I'm not sure about this thing anymore you yeah know? yeah they're treating, treating mm. him bad but but yeah we uh, on a serious note like I said we don't want to slip up in this game no, really, do we? I think we'll be alright in this game I, I mean I haven't really seen much of Stan in the no. age no, I, I didn't think saying? they were great when we played them at no, home. No. I think we'll win this game. You do, yeah? Yeah, I'll go 2-0. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think 2 yeah. Clean sheet, though? Uh, Alright, we'll go 2-1. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah. I can't bet on any clean sheets yeah, for us. No, not of us but no. I am confident we'll get the win. Yeah. So that's that one. And then moving on, Sunday. Big mm, game, man. Big game. Massive game. This is a big game. Man City at home. Um, let me just pull up some receipts on Man City. Yeah. Cause you know I like my receipts. Right, last five. Um, it's so so, isn't it? Yeah. Two two one. Lost two, drawn two. They're a bit up and down. Like one week you watch oh, them one. and it's like City of last season. They play you off the pitch, and then the next week you go, oh, "There's a lot of weaknesses there against you." You know what? United exposed them on the counter attack with their pace, the front three, Rashford and James and Marshall. Mm. I think we could do something similar with Martinelli, Aubameyang, and Pepe. Yeah. And the fact John Stones got injured, so Fernandinho will be at the back. He's not a natural defender. Otto Mendy is nothing special at all, is he? So, uh, do you know what? I'm confident we're going to score goals against them. Yeah. Um, it's just whether how many we can avoid conceding. You know, Tierney and Bellerin got injured. So probably right. Kolasinac and Ainsley and against Some would argue that that's been Bellerin's best contribution of the season. Well, you so. could say that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> that's his but, best um, game of the season no I'm it? not going to say that I didn't no. say that you've already no. said that <laughs> <laughs> but um, hey man I mean listen yeah the Man City I'm looking forward to this I game am as well. um, it'll be interesting to see how they go yeah. like you said Man City um, they lost last week yeah. in the United it's a big in the Derby and it was a big defeat for them mm. apparently it was a deserved defeat mm. um, United outplayed them for large spells of that game I suppose the only um, worry is um, Pep will really fire them up. You will. He's not going to allow them to play like that for two games. Mm. Um, so we might get the backlash, but hopefully they're still on a downer. And I think we need to score first. I'm sick of us. You know, we always go one nil down. We're trying to fight our way back into yeah. the game. We need to be positive. And yeah, score. we got to go at them, man. We can't sit back. No. Um, because their weaknesses. And I defense. think that's why this is going to be a very good game, actually, because yeah. they need the win. We need to win, obviously, mm. and um, you know they're coming off the back of that bad performance and the loss too. So their pride is hurt. Yeah, very much. So they want some get back. But and then, you know what, Aguero, we want to maintain our. Uh, Aguero's injured as well. That's which true. Which is a massive loss for them. It is. I don't think Jesus is the same level. No, he's, not. He's, he's good player. He is good player. But he's not at he's that not level. Sergio, is he, sir? Um, but then they got Sterling. Yeah, and Bernardo. And so Bernardo they've Silva. got a lot of quality, yeah. but got Maris as well, really, yeah. to come in as well. Yeah. So they're a bit like us, really, insofar as well. When I say a bit like us, obviously they're a lot better than us, but it's a similar kind of theme where they're a lot stronger at the top end of the pitch than they are yeah, towards the, back, the yeah. bottom. Yeah. Right? Um, so the attack is stronger than the defence. Yeah. And um, Stones is injured, right? Stones, yeah, he pulled his hamstring. And so Otamendi's not been having nah. the best of seasons. He's, he's a bit dodgy, isn't um, We're playing them at home. It'll be a sellout crowd. Um, following the win we had against West Ham, the crowd will be behind the team, at least to yeah. start with, anyway. Mm. So I'm really looking forward to this game, and I really think it's going to be a good game. Right, so having said all of that, um, predictions, putting our neck on the line. What I'm going to go 3 2 win. Wow. I'm going to go for it. We won last night. Why not be positive? If we yeah. lose, then next week we'll go, oh, we got it wrong. But yeah. I, do you know what? I think we're going to score goals against them. You know, I'm with you there. We will yeah. definitely score on Sunday, yeah. I believe. Um, yeah. Will we get three? I'm not sure. You know what? I'm going to go for 2-1. 2-1, two, one. Two, one, yeah. I'm going to go for 2-1. Um, <laughs> we're going to go. We we'll probably it might even be two up. Mm. City get one back and then we're holding on for dear life at the end it could be one of them type of games yeah, but I think we that. might just or I'm kind of thinking a draw might be I'll take a draw wouldn't you I'd take a draw but be, but be confident yeah yeah I yeah. think we'll beat them yeah yeah I'd like to think we're going to win I, given, yeah. given that we had such a good win yeah. a come from behind win 
against West Ham. So I'm going to stick with 2-1, although... You're not sure, though, I'm not you? sure. <laughs> uh, say it with your chest, that's yeah, what you yeah, say, isn't yeah, it? That's I your know, famous yeah, yeah, saying. Yeah, I'm not saying it with my chest, am I? No. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm going to go with 2-1. 2-1, yeah? So, um, I think Pepe's going to rip up that Angelino man at left-back. Yeah, He's well, gonna... Pepe's going to be on. You, you can see, by the way, when he come off the pitch, he was smiling, he was hugging up the manager. Yeah. That show body language. You know, it was good, wasn't it? It was very it was good very to see good. that. I like the way Freddie embraced him. And I, like, exa- and I was going to say the way Aubameyang, the way they embraced Pepe as well. Yeah. When he scored his goal, Aubameyang, yeah. the third one, the way yeah. they all Went got in the huddle, yeah. you could see that there was a semblance Even of confidence. Even with the fans after the game. factor coming. Exactly. Yeah. And if we can ride that wave, yeah. get off to a good start, get a goal, um, we know that City are a quality team, so they're going to mm. come back at us. But I still think that we might have enough energy to uh, eke out a win so yeah I'm going to go with a 2-1 win you've convinced me I'm going 3-2 but Um, yeah let's hope okay so thanks so that's the end people for this week Um, hope you enjoyed the show Um, keep supporting keep messaging keep texting keep doing what you do we really appreciate it we love the interaction of the show so yeah we look forward to seeing you next week and it only remains for me to say big C yes bro Thank you very much. Right. Tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, bro. check out my channel, Curtis Shaw TV. Keep subscribing and uh, appreciate all the support. Thanks again. Thanks for the support. Bless. Like, share, subscribe.